Shauna Lawhorn with the San Francisco League of Women Voters. I'm here to discuss Proposition C, a ballot measure which will be before the voters on Tuesday, June 5th. The city collects a gross receipts tax from many businesses which receive revenue from the lease of commercial property, such as office buildings, warehouses, and retail spaces. The current tax rate ranges from 0.285% to 0.3%. Businesses with $1 million or less in total gross revenues within San Francisco are generally exempt from the gross receipts tax. Certain other businesses are also exempt, including some nonprofit organizations, banks, and insurance companies. Propositions C and D concern the same tax. If both measures are adopted by the voters, the one with the most votes will be enacted. Proposition C would impose an additional gross receipts tax of 1% on the revenues a business receives from the lease of warehouse space in the city, and 3.5% on the revenues a business receives from the lease of other commercial spaces in the city. This additional tax would generally not apply to businesses exempt from the existing gross receipts tax. It would also not apply to revenues received from leases to businesses engaged in industrial uses, some retail sales of goods and services directly to consumers, or arts activities. This additional tax would also not apply to revenues received from certain nonprofit organizations or from government entities. The city would use 15% of funds collected from this additional tax for any general purpose. The city would use the remaining 85% of the funds from this additional tax for quality early care and education for children from newborns through age 5 whose parents are very low income to low income, quality early care and education for children from newborns through age 3 whose parents are low to middle income and do not currently qualify for assistance. Investment in services that support physical, emotional, and cognitive development of children from newborns through age five. And increased compensation for people who provide quality early care and education for children from newborns through age five. A yes vote means if you vote yes, you want to impose a new gross receipts tax of 1% on revenues a business receives from the lease of warehouse space in the city, and 3.5% on revenues a business receives from the lease of some commercial spaces in the city to fund quality early care and education for young children and for other general purposes. A no vote means if you vote no, you do not approve this tax. I'm here with Sandy Blackman, Executive Director of the Children's Council of San Francisco and a proponent of Proposition C. Welcome. Thank you. We're also joined by Lisa Remmer from the San Francisco Republican Party and an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. I'd like to start with Ms. Remmer. Why do you believe this proposition is so important? Um, just like housing costs, our commercial rents in San Francisco are, are already high, and this 3.5% tax will be passed on to the tenants, the businesses, who will then uh, pass it on to their staff and on to the um, consumers, us, um, raising the cost of living in San Francisco. The high cost and shortage of child care can be attributed to administrative costs of opening a child care business. Um, City Hall can help working parents by easing regulations and fees, allowing more child care uh, centers to open. Um, what is a crisis is the uh, city budget of 10.5 Two billion dollars, and the uh, 88 million deficit for this coming year, rising to 800 million in three years. Uh, we just paid 77 million for uh, child care three years ago. Um, and the value of child care, mm, well, the U.S. Department of uh, Health and Human Services reported that the Head Start benefits have all disappeared by third grade. Ms. Buckman, why do you believe this proposition is so important? Parents need childcare so they can work and support their families, and children need nurturing early care and education so they're ready for school and for life. Research shows that 90% of brain development occurs by age five, and that quality early education has major impact in short and long-term outcomes for children. But childcare and early education is expensive, costing $20,000 or more per year on an after-tax basis. It's often family's biggest expense, more than housing. Over 50% of San Francisco children live in families earning less than the self-sufficiency index. 40% of children in the city live in families eligible for state child care subsidies. Unfortunately, there are not enough subsidized slots for all families that qualify. 
Every month, there are 2,500 children on the waiting list for child care subsidies in San Francisco, two-thirds of them infants and toddlers. A second problem is low wages in the child care sector. Due to the work of the city's Office of Early Care and Education, we now know what it will cost to meet the needs of San Francisco families. We need to spend three to four hundred million dollars more per year. We're now going to move into some questions, and I'd like to start with you, Ms. Blackman. How will the voters be affected by this 3.5 percent commercial tax that's proposed in Proposition C? Well, I think this tax is actually good for our city. Um, my understanding is that our cur current commercial rents tax is lower than in other cities, and I believe that helping families pay for childcare is a critical need in our city. Um, we hear a lot about um, the struggles that families are having, particularly str um, struggles paying for housing. But frankly, as I said before, housing, um, child care is a bigger expense than housing. And I personally believe that helping people, families pay for child care is a housing strategy as well as an economic strategy for our city. When, when families get help paying for child care, they can work, support their families, and are contributing to the city's economy. And when um, they get help paying for child care, they also can afford more for housing. Same question to you, Ms. Rimmer. Uh, how will the voters be affected by this proposition, specifically by the 3.5% commercial tax? The 3.5% commercial tax can get passed immediately onto the tenants and businesses, or your, your doctor, your dentist, your grocery store, and they could end up reducing employee pay, cutting staff, closing shop. So do we really need any more vacant storefronts? Um, and mostly the tax will be passed directly on to consumers um, raising uh, the cost of living in San Francisco. What we really should be doing is lowering the regulations required to open a child care business from Head Start with 2,400 regulations to be complied with to all of our local zoning and licensing fees. Um, this 3.5 percent tax, um, uh, and, and none, of, none of it helps homeowners, just makes the city even more expensive since homeowners are already paying for the last uh, tax in 2014. So I just think it's going to make more people move away and uh, make the city cost more. Okay. A second question, which um, we'll start with you, Ms. Remmer, is what are the advantages or disadvantages to a universal child care program in your view? Um, in my view, the benefits of uh, ch early child care have disappeared by uh, third grade, and the claims of high quality child care are highly exaggerated. There's 10 studies that have been cited. Only half of them used randomized control. Only three found long-term positive results. And these took place 48 to 58 years ago uh, with treatment groups very small of only 60 children. They focus on infants, toddlers, not pre-K, and had a huge involvement with family, at-home family visits, which seemed to have worked out well. Um, the teacher-student uh, ratio was 33 to 66 percent higher than what students are, will be getting in what the proposed programs. The teachers all had bachelor's degrees and experience, and all of the moms in these programs had IQs under 85. And they actually weren't even really random. The treatment moms didn't work, and more dads were at home. And in the final result, the groups, um, both groups, the treated and the control group, um, still only earned under $12,000 a year. The fifth, they both had approximately 50% like arrest rates, yes, 6% less, um, less than a semester more in school, no IQ differences beyond the differences already shown among the children. The best results were actually for the moms with IQs under 70, and, who actually, and, all, and the moms who were like the, the younger moms with less school, um, the, the mothers actually in the treatment groups showed the biggest gains in lifetime earnings, even looking only from age 26 to 60, compared to looking at the children get 21 to, uh, to 65, the mother's earnings, lifetime earnings were estimated to be twice what the child's were. So yes, teen moms need free child care while they finish school, but we already fund these programs. Uh, same question to you, Ms. Blackman. What are the advantages or disadvantages to universal child care programs in your view? So I'm not quite sure what, um, Lisa, you've been reading, but the research, there is a growing 
um, body of research that shows the long, short and long-term benefits of quality childcare for families. Um, it's been Nobel economist James Heckman has pre presented a lot of research about the long-term societal benefits of investing in early care and education, both in um, uh, immediate outcomes and how, in children's ability, readiness for kindergarten, which takes a burden then off the school districts, and um, in the need to provide special education and quality education, um, in long-term earnings rates for families, um, the um, involvement in the um, criminal justice system. There is no shortage of studies that show the, ver the, the really important outcomes that come from quality early care and education. Um, for us, we have, um, we have a situation in the city where I believe that this is really the key to ensuring that San Francisco is a city in which diverse families can thrive. Um, we have, as I cited before, we have a, we have a high, 50 percent of San Francisco families are living below the self-sufficiency index. It's affecting kids of color. Um, ev you know, lack of access affects children of color, and it's really important that we want to pro provide equitable outcomes for children in San Francisco and ensure that all kids are ready to learn when they come into the school district, and we want to make sure that all families can thrive in San Francisco. Thank you, Ms. Blackman. We're now going to move to the closing statements, and we're going to start with you, Ms. Rimmer. This 3.5% tax would, will be passed on to uh, the to us, the, the customers, through the through the uh, the the, the uh, businesses, um, and I think that, that will make San Francisco that much less affordable. Um, again, the the child care, the value of child care, uh, di the effects disappear by third grade, except in these very few, few, few studies, which were with totally different groups of people, um, and they've been highly contested. I've read all, I've read these studies, so you know. Testing moms who have IQs less than 85, that's very different. Um, and, and again, I do think we, the teen moms do need um, free child care while they finish school, but we have this. So let's not raise the cost of living in San Francisco with a uh, tax that just gets passed on to the consumers. Thank you. Ms. Blackman? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I believe Prop C is a critical investment in the city's future. It'll raise over more than $100 million a year to support early care and education. Most of that will provide access to low-income families that are struggling to make ends meet, um, parents that can't afford to go to work or relying on family, friends, and neighbors, um, catch as catch can in order to be able to do that, to be able to work. Um, we. Um, and it will also help us increase the wages for our early educators, ensuring that we can actually have classrooms open to serve San Francisco's children. Prop C will help families pay for care and um, early education so they can work and support their families and contribute to our economy, and it will improve long-term outcomes for kids. Prop C is endorsed by a majority of our San Francisco supervisors, the San Francisco Democratic Central Committee, the Harvey Milk Democratic Club, San Francisco Labor Council, and many others. I hope you'll join me in voting for Prop C to ensure that our city is, remains one in which diverse families can live and thrive. Thank you. Thank you both for your time. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information about this and other ballot measures in the June election, please visit the Department of Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall starting on May 7th from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, June 5th. Thank you.